Hello, I'm Sandy Potter. I'm Michael L, and welcome to Ageless Living. We're happy to join you once again from our home studios as we continue to stay home and stay safe. And we certainly hope this finds you and your family well. You know, as we all go forward with a new set of normals, including the wearing of masks, it got us thinking about how we communicate with one another. Yes, and especially how those with hearing impairments might be affected. So we brought in an expert to get some tips. That's right. This week, I sit down with our resident audiologist, Dr. Hilary Lewis, to discuss that and much more. Let's take a look at the virtual discussion. Dr. Lewis, thank you so much for joining us. You know, in this day and age of wearing masks, it got us thinking that those with hearing deficiencies might be having an extra challenging time communicating. What are some of your tips to help with this? So the thing with masks is, is that it's going to be a necessity for the foreseeable future. And there are some things that we can do to help make it easier to communicate, whether it be someone with a hearing loss or even just someone with in general. Um, there are quick, simple things we can do to help supplement the fact that we're not able to see the visual cues of speech. Many people say to me, oh, I read lips. And we all do that to a point. So with the mask, we're denied that crucial visual cue to help us deduce what's being said. Um, so there are a few things that I like to highlight. They're simple, but it's something to be mindful of. Um, what I like to start with is if you can limit the background noise at any time you can, it's gonna be easier for both parties to hear and understand. So even if that means you're watching TV and the commercial comes on, hit the mute button. Simply limiting the background noise is just gonna make it easier. Um, the other thing I like to highlight is to get someone's attention first. So make sure that their focus is on what you're about to say. I always use the example that my father, if he's reading the newspaper, the world could be ending. He's not gonna stop and lift his head up to read the, from the newspaper. So if I simply say, hey dad, that gives him a split second to shift his focus on what we're about to say so he's able to understand it better the first time. Um, it's important to be mindful of social distancing that we have to maintain that six feet because it is about safety. But distance can be detrimental for conversation. So I would say you don't want to exceed that if you don't have to. Anytime you're closer to someone, it's going to be easier to hear and understand them. So while maintaining social distancing, try to keep the distance appropriate. And with most adults, when we have changes in our hearing, it doesn't manifest itself in a loss of volume. It usually manifests itself as a loss of clarity. So what that means is the high pitch sounds or the high frequency sounds aren't always coming in. And those consonant sounds such as S, F, T, Hs aren't coming through. So it makes speech sound muffled. The thing with the mask is, if you're wearing the mask, it muffles those really crucial consonant sounds even more. So it's important to be mindful to not speak too quickly. Because it's not a loss of volume, louder doesn't always mean better. Slowing down our rate of speech can make it easier for the person to deduce what's being said. They're using anything they can to help fill in those blanks, such as contextual cues. So slower is usually better than louder. So easy, but it's something that you have to be mindful of doing. Yeah. Yeah, no, great information for all of us. And you're right, it's not just if you already have a hearing mm -hmm. difficulty, it's, it's all of us with these new normals that we now have in place. Right? Exactly, yeah. Good. I know you haven't been doing outpatient appointments during this time, but you have been able to see patients virtually. Can you talk about that? Yes. Yep, so I think the idea of telehealth is something we're all familiar with now. It's uh, something that's been brewing in the background for a while, but with the pandemic, telehealth is now becoming um, much more popular. I know I had one with my doctor a couple months ago when this first all happened. So the audiology community is embracing it as well. So newer hearing aids in particular, I would say within the last three years, they now can connect to your smartphone. So by downloading a free app on specifically iPhones, but also Androids, um, your hearing aids can communicate with your phone. So telehealth appointments, we take advantage of that. So someone calls, we make an appointment, but just rather than coming into the office, we both log on to our phones, or in my case, my computer, and we're able to FaceTime with each other, just like so many of us have been doing with our loved ones during the pandemic. Um, and I'm able to hear what they have to say, what their concerns are. I can make adjustments on my computer 
I send them from my computer to their iPhone or their smartphone, excuse me, and then that person is able to upload those adjustments to their hearing aid. So if somebody said to me, you know, things aren't quite as loud enough as I need them, or loud sounds are a little too abrasive for me, we can go in there, make those adjustments, they get sent to their phone, the person can upload it. I don't think it's going to be in lieu of a one-on-one -on -one appointment, because with a one-on-one -on -one face um, in the office appointment, we're really able to cover our bases. But for a time when a person may not have the ability to come in, whether it be from COVID or even just weather, or if they're traveling, telehealth is a wonderful option. So yeah, it's been cool. Yeah. That, that is very cool. And yeah. I know it's so helpful to people, especially like you say, during this time and, and going forward and in other incidences that will come up. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Very, very yeah. cool. It's been, a, it's been a real game changer. Yes. Absolutely. What are some of the common concerns that you've been able to help people with during these appointments from their homes? I would say nine times out of 10, when people call me and say, you know, my hearing aid's not functioning as well as it used to or, or at all, it usually just needs a good cleaning. So we're always encouraging people to use a couple quick troubleshooting techniques on a daily basis to make sure that their hearing aid's working optimally. The goal of the hearing aid is to make our lives easier. We want you to be able to hear and understand and go about your day without thinking about your hearing issues quite as much. So these are some of the things I encourage people to do. One is, I have a hearing aid. I got one right here. You wanna make sure that it's clean. First and foremost, just even, this is a chamois cloth, just wiping it down, getting any sort of wax, dry skin, debris off can be really helpful. Uh, we try not to use Kleenex because that can be have a lint, so a nice chamois cloth is perfect and washable. This is one of my favorite pieces of troubleshooting equipment. It's a simple, universal tool. I get them free from the hearing aid companies, so I just pass them along to hearing aid users. There's a brush on one side and a hook on the other. For most people, we're going to use the brush. Simply brushing the end of the hearing aid, the part that goes in your ear, is going to prevent any accumulation of debris around it. And again, that can be wax or dry skin. It's a very small opening, so a little can really dampen the sound. So understandably, people gingerly clean it, but you can be pretty deliberate with it. The other thing is we always want to make sure it's stored in a um, dry, cool place. Um, you don't want to put it where there might be heat. And with the summer months approaching, with the humidity increasing, it's even more important to keep it dry. Um, hearing aids now have a coating on them that prevent moisture from getting in. So I would say like 15 years ago, in the summer months, people called with moisture issues. We don't see that as much anymore, but it's important to keep it dry. And then the other thing I like to highlight is most hearing aids have some sort of filter. The filter can get clogged over time. It's something that I can always help the person change in the office. But if someone comes to me with a hearing aid issue, it's the first thing I'm going to do. And while hearing aids can differ, this particular one, I'm going to pop the dome off. You get a little matchbook full of filters. Pull the matchstick out. You got one new filter, one empty side. Oh, yeah. Pop the old filter out, put the new filter in, toss this and pop the new one on. So for me, that just took a, a matter of mo a moment, a couple seconds. Um, so that's something we try to show people that they can do. So if they have a problem with their hearing aid in their home and they can't get to us, we're able to show them what to do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's the goal of the hearing aid again is to make your life easier. So if we can show you ways to optimize the performance, even better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's such great stuff. So helpful for so many people. I've I really want to thank you for all this information and for all oh, of no. your, your time with us today. Thanks, Andy. Absolutely. And if people want to contact you, we're going to put your information up on the screen here. And of course, you can be found on our website, which is masonicare.org. And now, let's take a look at what's happening around Masonicare. Congratulations to our team members across the continuum who are being recognized for their exemplary work. At Masonicare at Ashler Village, Mike, our lead maintenance mechanic, pictured standing with his supervisor, Vern, received May's Gem Go the Extra Mile Customer Experience Award. Every time one of our residents says how happy they are to no longer have to worry about the upkeep associated with maintaining a traditional home, that's a credit to Mike and all of our dedicated maintenance professionals. 
Thank you, Mike, for going above and beyond for those who have chosen to make Masonic Care their home. Masonic Care at Home virtually honored two of their team members, Angela and Shakoya, as the recipients of their Employee Quarterly Recognition Award. Masonic Care at Home director Kim Magelhays praised both team members, commenting on how they helped the entire Masonic Care at Home team accomplish their goals, particularly during this challenging time of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's an honor to work alongside them both, Kim said proudly. Finally, be sure to check out our brand new video series, Healthcare Heroes, where we recognize our dedicated frontline staff and managers who go above and beyond every day. You can find all of the videos from the series by going to masoniccare.org slash vlog. Thank you so much for joining us for another virtual edition of Ageless Living. We look forward to bringing you more stories about living well as we take this journey together. And until next time, stay well and remember, be ageless. Bye.